Okay, Pandora's mouth and down here in the city of Costa Mesa where they have a resolution on the table to ban the use of mercury. Business item number two. Request of Council Member Monahan for adoption of a resolution supporting a ban on dental mercury. Council Member Monahan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, fine that we got here. Anyway, um, I would just first off um, would just like to int we'll be introducing in, in just a minute some representatives of California's McGree Dentistry. I'd like to thank them for bringing this, um, what I believe is a very important item, to my attention. Mercury is an incredibly toxic substance, and it's in dental amalgams, and it's also getting into our water system and a lot of other things. Um, there's a, a lot more information that you're going to hear in the next few minutes from the group. Um, this is way overdue here in the United States, and especially in California. It's something that Europe and many other countries are getting much farther ahead of than we are, and it's, it's time that we start talking about it and bringing it forward. Um, some results from the Zogby poll, and I just want to point out two things in it. Um, number 47, that 94% uh, of Californians believe that their dentist should be required to inform them about the various types of mercury and non-mercury fillings available before filling a cavity. Which of the following would you be more likely to choose given the option higher cost fillings that contain no mercury or lower cost fillings that are about 50% mercury and 80% of California would be with the higher cost and no mercury. As just stated in that, there is mercury up to 50% in what we call silver fillings, which is kind of a misnomer because obviously if they're 50% mercury and only 25% silver, then they're mercury fillings. Um, but with that, I would like to invite um, folks up from California for a green industry to give a presentation on my behalf. Good evening, esteemed members of the Costa Mesa City Council. My name is Anita Vasquez Tibal, and I am the director of Californians for Green Dentistry. I want to thank you for giving us this opportunity to speak with you tonight about a growing environmental concern in our community. The people here and the hundreds who signed petitions support the Monahan Resolution. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, here Charlie Brown, uh, Executive Director of Consumers for Dental Choice and President of the World Alliance for Mercury Free Dentistry, here to speak in favor of the Monahan Resolution. Uh, amalgam is a primitive pre-Civil War product. It is a colossal pollutant. Uh, de dentistry, unfortunately, is the number two purchaser of mercury in this country, despite the fact of the decline. Half the dentists don't use it anymore. The Sierra Club and a number of other groups uh, put together a report showing that half of the mercury in residence, in products, is in our mouths. That let's not add to the problem because all that's going to leave. The mercury currently being used gets in the water. Mercury, uh, dental mercury is the largest contributor of mercury into the wastewater. Amalgam is not the lowest price material on the small fillings. Resin costs a little less on the small fillings, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. But amalgam on cost, the actual cost, the total cost, including the cost shifting to the taxpayers, to the parents who pay health bills and so on, amalgam is clearly the highest price. Uh, material going. I think as a lawyer, I guess I've thought a lot about this, and I think it's kind of dentistry's Achilles heel. Uh, we lawyers have our own problems too, and I, one of them I noticed years ago was victims' rights. Victims were shut out of the process by the prosecutors and the defense lawyers. It took public opinion, it took the Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and a whole movement to basically force the victims into the courtrooms over the objections of the lawyers. That was our mistake. The criminal justice system is much better. Well, dentistry is really just behind on this issue. This is the one issue they need to catch up with and need a little push. Uh, just turn your microphone off. I'm sorry if I mispronounced Yoko Young. Yeah. On the uh, California Board of Dental Examiners, and that's the group that uh, regulates the uh, dentists in California. So I know a little bit about this issue. I've been working in dentistry for 32 years, or over 32 years, and 20 of those years were spent doing what I call biological or, or mercury-free, mercury-safe dentistry. Uh, recently, I was fortunate enough to report to Cal OSHA regulators on the safety of uh, the dental environment. And I brought my assistant and I showed the regulators what I do in my office to protect her from the vapors and the dust and the aerosols that are kicked up by taking out the amalgam with the dental drill that's a high-speed uh, 
piece of equipment. She was wearing a vapor mask, which kind of looks like a gas mask. We need to protect the dental assistants as well as the dentist from the amalgam which is uh, vaporized and actually it's the mercury that's coming off of that. So I'm a U.S. Navy veteran, longtime Costa Mesa resident. Bottom line, mercury is toxic. You know it. I know it. If we dropped it in here, the hazmat team would come in and we would evacuate. You would not put mercury into your child. You wouldn't put it in your mother. You wouldn't put it in your family members. My name is Marisa Russo and I'm a dental hygienist. I was just in Costco a few weeks ago and I was admiring this beautiful outdoor light fixture. And on the front cover of the box of this light fixture, it said mercury free and lead free. And I thought to myself, isn't it amazing how a light fixture company is so proud to advertise that they're safe for the environment? And yet dentists daily are putting that same mercury in our teeth, just inches from our brain. I'm Christy Mills, and I'm a local naturopath. Mercury is the most toxic substance on the planet, second only to plutonium, which is radioactive. It's also one of the most common causes of chronic health problems, such as chronic fatigue, depression, multiple sclerosis, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, cardiovascular problems, hormone-related problems, ADHD, autism, learning disabilities, Alzheimer's, and other neurological and immune conditions. My symptoms included fibromyalgia, migraines, dizziness, peripheral neuropathy, uncoordinated movements, vision disturbances, anxiety, lactating without being pregnant, ADHD, facial numbness and twitching, tremors, metallic taste in the mouth. I have 81 food allergies, including gluten and dairy, heart palpitations, ringing in my ears, nausea and vomiting. I could go on, but I don't have all my... I'm a molecular biologist. I got my degree from UC Santa Barbara and Neuroscience Research Institute. So I'm not qualified to talk about the environmental effects of, of per se, but I, I can give you not what I would call my professional opinion, but what's considered common knowledge in the scientific community where it concerns mercury poisoning. There is no safe level of mercury exposure. That is to say, at a cellular level, particularly neurotoxicity, there is no threshold below which exposure is safe. It's been said here too that mercury is notorious for being accumulated in the body. So when you have something that would constitute a chronic load of mercury in your mouth, you're being exposed to it and you're accumulating it over a long period of time. Some people do need to be, to have a push to act uh, responsibly and appropriately, and I think that's what this resolution uh, will help uh, induce. So please protect the precious resource that you have here, because I think that is one of your most valuable. Councilmember Monahan, Beaver, <laughs> comments, questions, motions? Um, I just want to move that we adopt the Monahan ultimatum. <laughs> I'm going to uh, ask the folks from California for the green dentistry to you can provide us with information on the amalgam um, separators and what they're doing in some of the other cities and counties. That would be great. Absolutely. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Call for the question. Well, Anita's comment? bragged about you, you for a long comment? time. What happened? Yeah, this is uh, going worldwide, this move. I mean, California has spoken, a major city in California has spoken, <laughs> and the world will hear this. This is a shot heard around the world. It's a message that says, now, starting right here, right now, October 19, 2010, we're going to start a ban movement in the United States, and this ban movement is going to, going to move toward Washington, the move toward Sacramento, toward Washington, and toward the United Nations Treaty. So we're on the way. What just happened here, and, and why is it important? We just had history. A resolution was passed tonight in the city of Costa Mesa, uh, um, a resolution that was brought forward by uh, Councilman Gary Monahan, who has an autistic child, 
and he wrote a resolution that is so strong and powerful asking for dentists to cease voluntarily to use mercury in, in the city of Costa Mesa. This is just the first step in a, in a uh, effort to make uh, the dental office, what I, what I was saying anyway, uh, first step to make the dental office safe and healthy. Something to suggest that we get uh, moving and, and go forward. This is huge. This is this will be this is history. This is really history.